hash things out once we got there. Guys, we know that from um, from the phone calls and what I mean, it was we. I can only imagine what you were going through. I know that for those of us that got the phone call, it was pretty intense. And um, at at that point, you, you notified one person. Another person has been notified. You ever played that game, pass it on, where you tell somebody something, and by the time it gets back around, and and and, and the story was going parallel to a point before it, it separated, and that's that's when we really started getting worried. But then. Um, you did everything correct, and I can uh, I can appre we appreciate that, and that's one of the things that we're that we want uh, those those other people that are looking at and participating in this race that we didn't make this thing to be dangerous. Situations become dangerous. Um, it's one of the reasons why we have a we have a procedure set up. And that you wear the gear that you wear, that we try to give you, and in fact, put it in, in the rules and regulations that you wear the the, uh, the the devices that you have to alert. And of course, this is this has got a much happier ending. But you get back on the boat and you finish the race, and you go back out again today. Why? 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 The easy answer is because we enjoy the challenge, and we do this uh, well because we love it is the reason that we do it. Uh, there isn't a why. Uh, the, there were a couple of questions immediately. We realized that we accepted outside assistance, uh, which is an infraction off the bat. But let me, let me finish what I'm about to say. At that point, when, when you're out there and you're, you put yourself in that situation, which is exactly what we do. We understand the risk and we're trying to finish a race uh, we're trying to do as best we can in the race. A disqualification takes a far back seat to everything else that's going on. Uh, what we were trying to do was obviously retrieve a sailor from the water, whether it had been him from our boat or another sailor from another boat. That takes precedent. The Tybee 500 uh, is a huge priority in both of our lives. We, we love it. We've gotten to really enjoy this race. We did it last year. We'll do it again this year and hopefully be doing it for years to come. Uh, asking some one of us why do it is like asking somebody else, you know, why they breathe. I guess I've seen that on the back of shirts around here, and that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, if your mama sees this, she's gonna go back to the day she used to spank you. Yeah. And then if you one of your buddies see this, he's gonna think you're crazy. Probably. And um, I and uh, you certainly impressed me. At the same time, you scared me. And and, and I, I don't know where to take it from there. You're the only one that knows what your limit is. And if you walked in and you said, that's it for us, we're walking away, nobody would hold that against you. There's other sailors that would like to do this race. And we wanted them to hear the story because it's not a cakewalk all the time. And if you were going to go talk to a friend of yours, and knowing what, that, what you just told everybody, and you said, but this is why you should or you shouldn't do this race, give it to me in your own terms. It's, it's, your, it's your talk. As you said, know your limits. Prepare as best you can. Do what you need to do and know that you're going to just get hit with curveballs one after another. And this race, a lot of it is just sailing with problems. You're problem solving constantly out on the water. We're, we're going a long distance on equipment that's not meant to go a long distance. So whether it's a broken bungee or a sailor off the boat, it's a problem. And, and you have to solve it, and you have to figure out how best to do it with the equipment that you've been given. But I, I would let anybody who was a sailor who was looking to do this race kind of look within and, and figure out what what's the right thing for them to do, whether they want to do it and challenge themselves or, hey, there's nothing wrong with also just sailing for the sake of sailing. It's a beautiful sport. You guys going to be on the line in the morning? Hell yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's your point here to finish up with whatever you want to say, and we just call this uh, from the hip, and um, you, you close us out. Well, uh, I will say we, uh, we did make a few changes to our safety um, our safety gear we went out today 
Um, one of the biggest things was yesterday, um, the boats sailing by, they, with the conditions they were, they couldn't hear, they couldn't see the winds whipping in your ear, the water spraying you. Um, a, a whistle from 30 yards away is, is nothing. So, I mean, we ended up putting the flares on our persons today um, in effort to kind of counteract some things. Another thing I would like to say is that Sito, who did, uh, I activated my EPIRB, obviously in the water, there was, I could see the other boats, I could see them looking, and they can't, they can't see you. The swells, the wind, there's no, I mean, they can't, the only thing out of the water is you, your, your neck up. And it, it was really nice to be, I guess, rescued that quickly. Um, it could have been a situation where you could have been in the water for a long time and you're in this water and I mean all I could think about were sharks to be honest and what I was wearing. Um, it's kind of a joke around here but I, I'm, I'm wearing We now a call him Seal. I'm wearing a black and white, uh, you know, pants and a black and whitish top and I look like a seal and I'm flailing around in the middle of the, of the water not far from the Gulf Stream so the number one thing on my mind was, was sharks to be honest. And uh, it was really extremely reassuring to be able to activate that and to be able to be found that quickly without spending, because I know this whole process went down in about 20 to 25 minutes, but I mean, it felt a lot longer in my shoes. Um, but to be picked up that quickly really gave a lot of confidence to be able to go out there this morning and launch and know that in, in extreme situations, uh, there, there is help out there and you know these this is obviously one of the most extreme situations you could come into in this race is to be separated from the boat and be gone just waiting all you can do is wait for someone to get you so that's really nice to know and that's one of the main reasons that we'll be back on this line and we'll be back on the line tomorrow um, if it were the case that there wasn't help like that then you know it'd be harder to get back out there but that's out of my head now and you know we can go out there and do this knowing that there are people looking out for you and you can try and sail fast and push the limits and worry about the you know the consequences later because you know there are people looking out for you ready to assist. You guys think that this experience right here is something to brag about or something to be thankful about? <laughs> I'm not bragging about this at all I can assure you that uh, it's definitely something to be thankful about. Um, it could have been a lot worse. It was a terrible situation that ended up, in, it, in retrospect, it doesn't seem that bad, but at the time it was really uh, a worrisome and scary situation. All of a sudden, listening to the birds and smelling the flowers just came back into your life, didn't it? There was a celebration of life last night. All right, guys, thank you so much thank you. for sharing that story. And, and they need to know what the good side and the bad side of any situation is. And I, I'm thankful we're here to talk about it. Thank you. you